Have you ever thought about all the different steps involved in making a mug? Uh, you'd be surprised how many there are. So, and here I am drinking out of my favorite mug, and we're gonna walk you through the different steps, starting with um, mixing my clay and, and getting it just right. I'm lucky I've got a nice pug mill here. It's gonna make a little bit of noise while I take the air out. First we need to center the clay, make sure it's not wiggling all over the place. Now I'm making the first hole and down about stopping about a quarter of an inch before the bottom and maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch, not quite. Now I'm just grabbing the clay, this is called pulling up and I'm pulling the clay up between my fingers. Usually with a small piece like a mug I'll just do two pulls before I start shaping. Got a couple of different ribs I like to use for the final shaping here. Start out with my slightly curved one. Not only is it shaping the final form, but it's also helping to remove some of my throwing rings. Really, I'm just looking at the shape here and making sure the form is just as I like it. Now, you'll notice I have to have two uh, sponges on a stick. This one I like to use just to get the extra moisture out. And then this one I like to use because I can compress the bottom a little bit and just take out a little bit more of the throwing lines by running it up the side. And the last step, or second to last, Make sure the rim is nice and smoothed over. Nobody likes a sharp rim. Then I'm gonna take away a little bit of the clay at the bottom. This just saves me a little bit of time when, uh, for the next stage, which will be trimming the bottom of the pot. Yeah, make it look easy, eh? Okay, so now uh, I'm going to trim the bottoms of the mugs. This tool that I'm using to hold the mug in place while I'm trimming it is called the Giffen Grip. And the clay has to be still fairly wet, otherwise when you go to put your handle on, it'll crack in the drying stage. So you have to tread gently, so to speak. For me, the, the foot is really where the, the pot begins. It gives it that nice graceful feeling of lift. Now once you've finished the trimming part, kind of torn open the clay, so we need to seal it up a bit, otherwise you'll get a lot of pinholes when you go to glaze it. Now I'm going to the all-important uh, signature part. There we go, signed. Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you how uh, the magic happens. I'll make handles. I'm going to take a ball of clay and I have my hand on a slight angle. And I'm going to cut it like so. And that's my lug. I'm just going to make a little scratch mark. We call this scoring. Here I'm going to put the handle. And I've got a little bit of what we call magic water, which is a little blend. So, isn't that magic? There you go, a handle. All right, so uh, we bisque fired everything now. That's the first firing. And my assistant Beatrice is gonna now unload the kiln 
and B is going to wax the bottom of all the pots that we make. Before we get to glaze them, we need to wax the bottom so that when we dip them in the glaze, the wax runs off nicely and uh, we don't waste a lot of extra glaze and time. How many years you've been firing? Opening the kiln is always a little bit like Christmas Day. It's always a good thing. Woo -hoo. And there we go, first look. So there we go. Now you know all the different steps involved in making a mug. There's quite a few, aren't there? From start to finish. That's our Hamada Rust with Nuka. This is the Nuka glaze over top where you saw us pouring an extra layer of glaze. That's this one over top of this one. All ready for your morning cup of coffee.